Over the last few months, our team at CBC News has been highlighting climate change and the environment. You know it. It's a critical concern for Canadians. I mean, not to mention a hot-button election issue. My next guest is doing her part with the creation of something called Milk Bag Mats. You see it there. They're weaving together the plastic outer shells of, you know, those four-liter milk bags. So Angela Kessley is making multi-use mats for people who are in need here at home and also overseas. And she's helping our planet. Since 2008, she has saved more than 18 million bags from going to the landfill, because that's where they would end up. Our chase team yes. has reached Angela Kessley in Woodbridge, Ontario. Angela, I, I have to, you know, mea culpa here. I have thrown out those very same milk bags. You don't do that. So what do you do with them? Well, we take the outer milk bag. I have one here, the colored bag, not the inside right. bags that hold the milk. And we cut these bags up and tie them into strips. And then we use them to weave mats with on a wooden frame. Who's we? So as have you, you got a whole have you got a whole clan of people there? You know what? We have thousands of wonderful volunteers. Wow. Um, I cannot weave the thirty two thousand mats that we've made. I just couldn't. I mean I might be able to make a mat a day if I'm home. But we have so many people, whether they are young children in schools to uh, the elderly in seniors' homes. And everybody feels like they have a purpose and a part in this, and it's lovely. Where do these mats go? What are some of the stories the mats have, you know, <clears throat> given you back, if you will? So do I have an hour or five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I, um, want, I want one story. Okay. No, well, we take the mats to a place called Canadian Food for Children, which is here in Toronto, in Mississauga, actually. Mm -hmm. And they ship the milk bag mats as packaging material to about 22 countries around the world. We also have mats that go uh, to the homeless here in Toronto, in Kitchener, and in Moncton, New Brunswick. So it's not only a need all over the world, but it's a need in our own country too. And um, I've been to Haiti twice. I've been to Nicaragua once. Mm -hmm. And our only problem is getting the milk bags down there. But once we do get them to these countries, I will go and I help ladies to create their own mats mm -hmm. because we can make mats until, you know, until as long as we have milk bags. But if I can get those ladies to create their own mats, then they feel they're a big part of it. And what's, so. the, re what's the reaction? You know, when you, somebody who has nothing or very little compared to what we mm. have here in Canada, and I pinch myself all the time about that, <laughs> what's the reaction when you say, I've made this mat and my team has made this mat for you? Yes. Well, um, actually, we had a real-life story. There was a man from Canadian Food for Children who decided to go to Liberia because he wanted to see when the container gets there with the food and the medical and school supplies, the bicycles, the milk mm -hmm. bag mats. He wanted to see the reaction of the people um, when the container was being unloaded. And supposedly a lady came to him and said, I want you to come and see my house. Yeah. So he said, okay. So he went over and the story goes, the only thing that woman had in her little house was a milk bag mat. And she said, I'm so happy to have this. And she said, someone in Canada made this for me. Wow. That really touches your heart. No kidding. I've got my heart in my throat right now because it is a fantastic <laughs> story. Have you ever slept yes. on one of these or sat on one of these? Are they comfortable? Are they at least a little bit soft? <laughs> well, I have to tell you, when my husband and myself and two of our three boys went to Haiti, our second time that we went, mm -hmm. we had the, the um, we did not have a bed. We did not have a hotel. We had a school floor, which was made of cement. Yep. So the four of us slept on milk bag mats for seven nights. They're comfortable, they're cushy, and I absolutely every night laid down and went, ah, oh, this is great. Oh. So, yes, I've tested them. You know what, the small things, right, and things that we take for granted that other people don't. What about those who are helping yeah. you? You mentioned the stories of those who are on the receiving end. Those on the giving end, mm -hmm. why do they do this? Why do they sit for hours with that big crochet hook and make these milk bag mats? Well, to tell you the truth, we used to crochet them. And a big, four, um, a big mat that's six feet long and three feet wide would take mm -hmm. 40 hours to crochet. Yikes. But now we weave the... And we can weave these mats in about two hours. 
And the thing when it comes to crocheting is you need to be skilled to do it. And um, I've taught thousands of kids in Metro Toronto how to crochet, but they remember today and forget tomorrow, but they never forget how to weave. So we have all these people who love doing it and they're excited because they know that they're just taking something that is was going to end up in the landfill and mm -hmm. they're making a quality product for somebody. And I can't say enough, every time somebody makes a mat, I've seen it. They have to lay down and test it and they go, they just <laughs> love it. And everybody's very happy. It's such a social thing. You know what? I can see the joy on your face and I can feel the joy in your heart. I want to thank you for your time and for sharing your stories, Angela. Best of luck with this uh, and taking thank plastic so milk bags and helping to put a smile on people's faces. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for um, highlighting this for me. I, I really appreciate it. That's Angela Kessley. She's the founder of Milk Bags Unlimited, and our chase team reached her in Woodbridge, Ontario.